Hey everybody, working on a 2008 Subaru Outback 2.5i Limited today, gonna be pulling the dashboard. I uh, pulled it last week to clean under there, get some mouse droppings out and mouse nests, put a junkyard dash in, but I did not switch out my airbag. So today we're gonna remove the dash and I'll show you the process. It's not too bad, probably knock it out in about an hour. If it's your first time, just be patient. Let's do this. First thing we want to do, disconnect the battery. Let it discharge for 30 seconds to a minute. Go step on the brake pedal. Turn on some lights. Drain that battery. So not too many tools needed for this job. Uh, a lot of Phillips. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket, 12 millimeter socket, uh, 17 millimeter for the steering wheel. Maybe a little bit of length to get past the wheel. Um, a Torx 30 bit, doesn't have to be the tamper proof, that's going to loosen the airbag from the steering wheel. A couple flat heads, some trim tools, that's all you're going to need. First thing we want to remove is the center console, it's going to be two 10 millimeter bolts. The pins are out, a good idea for any project like this, keep all your hardware in a plastic bag. Uh, this is ready to swivel up. Um, it's going to have the pigtail for the heated seats underneath. It's a big white connector like this. I already had it disconnected because I just had this out yesterday. Uh, it's going to rotate up. Uh, this panel just pops up and out. You can just get grab down below the seat belt, pull it up. Only thing you need to worry about here is this clip. I usually go up and kind of slide it out to the side here. That does pop out, but I just like sliding it out. See, yeah, it just popped out there. These two things, they just pop right back down in there. So this is out. Once you get that pigtail disconnected, center console's out. If you forgot to put your car in neutral like me, all you need to do is pop off that panel, slide that down, you're in neutral. Now you can get all this off easily. Ready to start taking some trim out. So this one just pries up, go on like each corner. Get under there a little better. I want to give even pressure to everything. This one, you go from the back, and there's a couple on the side. I'll slowly wiggle out. You've got one pigtail for the cigarette lighter. Place that to the side. Now we go right into these two Phillips here. And then this will pop off these colored trim panels. Then after the two Phillips, we're going to go right below those other two Phillips. I'll take off the panels below, and drop the screw. This one's still tight. And now the two below on the black plastic. The tool I like to have around is one of these little magnets, because um, those screws like to flop around down in there. Gets those out easy. And when you drop it down below the seat, you can pick it right back up again. Okay, center trim panels are gonna come off. These all have tons of tiny yellow clips you're gonna see. Um, this just kind of slides to the side, gently, gently, gently. All the clips intact, beautiful. Side, gently, 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 a little bit of wiggle. This one was a little tighter, I remember. Beautiful, popped out, clips intact. Next up, these two Phillips up top. Getting these upper Phillips out now that will enable this panel to come off. Without getting too far ahead, we're gonna take these side panels off first. These are just gonna pop out. Beautiful, because we wanna get this panel off. So we have three trim clips below the steering wheel. Some of them are these spin type. You wanna spin it 90 degrees, get it unthreaded, then pop her out. center one, just a basic pop tab. Once you get this panel off, you're gonna have to just disconnect the OBD port just to make things easier. Get that panel out of here. Sometimes the screws stay in the port, sometimes they fall. One of them fell, just don't lose track of them. Here's the second one. Okay, with the bottom uh, kick panel off. Now there's only one long Phillips screw on the side here. Not long, just way in there. It's 
got a little metal clip behind it that it threads into, it makes it a bit tricky. Now this panel is ready to come off. It's got the yellow clips like before, even pressure pulling out and back. Nothing too hard anywhere. Get down low there. Beautiful. So now you're gonna have to disconnect the harnesses here for the uh, the dimmer switch and de-icer or whatever. So let's get my tiny little flathead. Well, flathead's missing, so Phillips is gonna do. This thing's gonna fall in a second. That's a tough one. I'm like popping out of the housing. Hey, with that under panel removed and that screw out, we can now take out this inner panel. Should be a pop tab over here. That pops right out. This is ready to come out. So what we need to do here is it's already loose, but these are clinched together. When they pop together, you need to put a little screwdriver in there and separate them. Now you can split the two one side out when doing it. These things are tough. All right, pop that out. Yeah, see this one is just a threaded screw, so this pops back on and off. Loosen that, good. Pop these clips off. I'm missing one in the middle, so I put this back on. I only had two. That's the lower tray off. This one just clips in here. That's what we can do here. You get it over that tab, get it over that, and look, it pops right out. It's just got those two to align there. Now we gotta take out this panel. So this panel holding the gub box, just one little screw here and a clip. I'm honestly not sure how this is, if this is how it was originally. This is how I put it back together after having it dismantled three times. So now there's like two clips in here. Basically at this seam, we're gonna pop out this vent and I'll show you it. This is when you wanna be pretty gentle. You can replace these at the junkyard obviously, but I just do even pressure, get one corner, go around the perimeter. Beautiful. So the clip I'm talking about is right here. This little tab. So we're gonna take a little screwdriver, press down right there, give a little back pressure, pop that side out. This one is trickier. I have to take that out, so let's do it now anyways. I like the side vents, you're gonna to wanna to be gentle with these because our dashboards are old, dried, they wanna crack. So I use a flat trim tool, tapered, get to one edge, then I can start lifting without grabbing the rubber. Let's get a finger in there, pop that side. Beautiful. So there's going to be one pigtail for the clock and temperature. Your vents are out. Like that tab on the passenger vent. Let me get down in there, right on that clip and put a little back pressure on it. Now there's gonna be a harness connected down here. Oh, got ahead of myself. There is one clip here. Those are the ones you spin and then it will pop out. Ooh, there she goes. Don't lose your hardware. So this pops out as well. Two tabs, this little module. Is one tab down, two tabs down. So this panel is out. Now we're looking at the blower motor. This is the light for the DAT or the glove box. Blower motor, if you want to replace it, go through the bottom. Cabin air filter right there. Next up is the radio. We got six Phillips screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. And start unscrewing those. All right, with the six Phillips screws out, it's time to start moving the radio. 
it should just yep, slide pop off the two tabs. Now you're gonna have a bunch of pigtails to remove. The first one is gonna be the hazard lights. Let's get the flat head. Hazard lights gives you some more room to operate. We'll flip it to the side. Main harness. Little ground. Okay. And then don't forget the, I think that's a antenna. That one you pinch on the side. And I, there we go. So the radio is out. We're getting there. This is where the Torx comes into effect. There's a T30 screw on each side of the steering wheel. I'm gonna break those free. Now these don't come out, they just float inside the housing. This just clamps down on the airbag. So once you feel it just kind of spin freely, that's loose. Get to the other side. So with the T30 removed, this is ready to slide out. So you want to be gentle here. There's going to be a couple disconnections you're going to make. For the airbag clips, you just want to go in underneath these yellows, lift them up. Then you can just go to the side of the housing, just give a little pride, they'll pop right up. Little boop, little boop, gentle. This clip slides off the bottom here. And this white one, you're gonna wanna take off as well. You'll see why later. The airbag out and the white pigtail gets connected. Store this on a safe place where it's not gonna go anywhere. Put it airbag side up. Now we're gonna grab our 17. Now this only has about 30 pounds of torque. You're gonna hold the wheel, break it free. Now loosen it a bit. If you got the nut loosened a bit, keep it on there. Give it a good yank just to free it up. Now you can loosen it up. So one thing you're gonna wanna do, see I have these gold marks here. I marked the top notch of the steering shaft in relation to the top of my steering wheel because we're going to be taking it off and the clock springs going to be underneath. We want to keep everything in relation because there's no, you can see splines there. We want to line those up. We can slide out gently. Now if the clock spring rotates a little bit, it's no big deal. We have our markings. Slide everything back except our white pigtail. Our harness. Now we're just going to set that there. And we'll put a piece of tape just so we don't okay, mess with all it. All the vents out, steering wheel out. Next up is the dash. Very simple. One little Phillips. The thing I noticed, you want to have your wheel as low as you can because it is pretty tight getting in there. Get this baby. Top screw securing the dash out. There's two holding the bottom. Now they're very hard to spot, but I can tell you that they're in these black slots, I'm gonna to point to it here. There's one screw, there's another side. So there's these tapered things that you can slide the dash onto. So you go up kind of from the side. Now I don't have these very tight, just enough to hold it. There's one screw holding that side. And this side was much worse, but we got her. Just get a nice long Phillips and you'll get them. two screws on the bottom of the dash, with the cluster out and the top one, this thing's ready to wiggle. So you wanna lean it forwards. The biggest thing I've seen people do is ripping out chunks here. This one has a nice design, they kind of tapered it. Just lean it forwards and it's gonna slide up and out without those two holding it. Two pigtails on the back. The clips are on the top so you can just reach around the back, dig your thumbnail in. One and two green clips. Come on. Beautiful. Spin, dash cluster out. Okay, now we're ready to loosen the dash. Now in total, there's like 10 or 11 Phillips screws. That's all it is. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One down here, and then two holding the airbag. 
So we got 11. Nine screws, two bolts. This, I'm just gonna keep the video rolling because this is where the magic begins to happen. Two down. Three down. Six screws down. There's one in the side down here that holds this plastic thing that supports the radio. And that one likes to bind, so be ready to catch it. There we go. So that is seven Phillips down. Eighth Phillips. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I torched that. Okay. If I remember correctly, all we have left is going to be the two for the airbag. Now we've got all the Phillips out. We want to go behind the glove box. Look for this pigtail, or the harness, and this bracket. There's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts securing the airbag. Gonna get those out. Okay, with those two 10 millimeter screws out, we're gonna disconnect the airbag. Really wanna push down this pigtail really far, and it'll pop out. And we want to disconnect this big white clip from the body. These just kind of spin out. And also this black clip. Another pair of little vice grips or needle nose helps. I just only had these handy at the moment. Pinch and pop through. Dash is ready to come out. What want to keep an eye on when removing are these, uh, these harnesses here. And... Yeah, make sure nothing gets caught up here. Yeah. Before the we pull the dash, we want to remove these pillars. Now these are super simple. If you pry this back a bit and look down, you're going to see a silver slot that you can just go in at this angle. You're just going to push down really hard and that releases the tension. And this clip cl closes, opens up, slides right out like butter. Go do the other side. Get up in there, pull it down a bit, spot the target, miss the target, side pillars out, this baby should be ready to wiggle out. Watch out for this pigtail. dash now you want to remove this clip here that holds the pigtail you just pinch that down slides out the back we start lifting and pulling and oh, I left the keyless entry module connected that's another thing you got to remember if you're swapping the dash this black module here you want to swap this over to the one you previously had because this unlocks your car. So we got everything disconnected, ready to come out. All right, let's hoist this baby out of here. All right, so this is my $60 junkyard dash I just put in. Problem is, this is a 2005 airbag and I have a 2008 car that had the airbag replaced in 2018. 
So now my car has the airbag light on saying, hey bro, that's not my airbag. So we're gonna take that module off, put the old airbag back in, then reinstall. All right, so this is why I pulled the dash. Uh, this is what I had in there. This came out of a 2005 uh, dashboard. And yeah, manufactured August 11th, 2005. The one that was in my car, this one was like 7, 8, 2007. So two years newer. It's what came with the car. It's what it recognized. I'm hoping that solves the airbag light. So we're gonna put the dash back in now. The reassembly isn't too bad, same process. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention when removing, you're gonna have one little pigtail over in the corner there for I think it's the security sensor. Uh, you're gonna wanna pop that out of the dash before you pull the dash. I had already had it removed and my new dash does not have that little light. So I can't use that pigtail. So just remember to unplug that before pulling the dashboard out. Now we're gonna put the dash back dash in. Back in, obviously just be gentle. lay it on the wheel for a second while I reposition. Oh, I just remembered. So this dash on the 2005 is a little bit different. It didn't have the tilt wheel on this. So I have that part of the housing there. I'm gonna cut that out. I'm gonna cut this out so it doesn't bind. 